Hello Code Concatenators, it's your good old friend Shadow here. Today we're going to teach you how to use PyCharm in concatenation with Qt Designer or Qt, however you pronounce it. There are two different ways. Uh, a lot of people say Qt, uh, I say Qt, who cares? Anyway, uh, we're going to be creating a GUI application. Very simple, yes, very simple. So before anyone comments on this video and says, oh, that was too simple or that was too easy, remember, this is just to teach people how to use these things in conjunction with each other to create simple GUI applications. Now they can become uh, a lot more advanced and if uh, you guys want a tutorial that uh, is much more advanced I'd be more than happy to show you some advanced uh, networking applications such as an instant messenger that I wrote and, uh, and other things but for the time being this is simply to show you how to use PyCharm, which is my favorite IDE for Python, and Qt Designer or Qt Designer to design our forms, and of course, finally PySide, which is the cross-platform uh, uh, widget uh, for our GUI stuff. So uh, you need to have all those installed. So you need PySide, of course, you need Python, and this website's the best resource for those things. The API references that we're going to be using for our uh, PySide widgets here uh, is wonderful. It shows us all the methods for the objects. It shows us all the methods for the widgets rather. So for instance if we wanted to see uh, what methods we have for a text edit we simply type that in there. It's going to list all of those uh, text edit, Qt text edit for PySide. So and this gives us a reference for the signals, slots, and all that stuff. And of course, usually what you want to look at is the very bottom one. So PySide Qt Qt Text Edit. This is what we're going to be using today, uh, along with a button. But as you can see, it shows us uh, what key bindings they have, what drag and drop, all this stuff. Uh, our, our virtual functions, our our uh, functions, our slots, and our signals. So. When you develop your applications, you're going to need this because there's too much to remember. You have to have documentation in order to continue to write these programs. So um, that uh, main website here that we're going to be looking at, remember everyone, this isn't scripted. So I'm showing you the exact process of what would happen if you would go through to you know, design an application, all the problems, all the things that you might run into. And believe me, that happens to all programmers. So you're going to go to wiki.qt.io forward slash PySide documentation. So that's going to be your main resource there uh, for, for the uh, applications that we're going to be using. Now I already have PyCharm opened because it's in Java and um, if you want to wait 10 minutes to see, <laughs> to see it open then you can. So I already have it open. So the first thing we're going to do so we have a repository to create our files and store them is we're going to create a new project. We want it to be pure Python and remember this is the professional edition so you want to get PyCharm the community edition will work fine um, we're gonna call this shadow adder we're gonna simply create an application that adds two numbers together with a form I know that sounds very simple but you have to understand that there's a lot of things that go in to creating that so once you have that done then great we can move on to more advanced applications and you're free to uh, request that I do that we're gonna call our program today shadow adder and the interpreter that we're going to be using today uh, is uh, 2. We're going to use Python 2. You can use 3, but the syntax differs a little bit between 2 and 3. So for the purposes of this application, we're going to be using uh, the interpreter for 2. Okay. So we'll let Python create that application, rather the project. And uh, the first thing we want to do is add our main file to it. So we're going to add a new Python file and this is going to be our main. I usually name it main. It'll name it'll put the Python extension on it for you. And uh we're going to delete everything here because I have a template resource that I use because the things that we type every single time uh become cumbersome. So let's take a look at our template here and we're just going to copy everything. And we'll put it into our main Python file there. Now, you're not going to be able to run this or anything just yet because we don't have our uh, GUI classes or our, our, our UI classes set up yet. But you main dialog, and what I want to point out here is this line, the Python GUI file. This is the GUI file that we're going to be using, and we'll see what that means here in a minute. And the class in your Python file, and uh, of course the name of your Python file, which will be up here. 
you know, so we'll just go ahead and save this real quick so we have that there. And we'll go ahead and we'll minimize this because we won't be working with that for a little bit. The next thing that we're going to run here is the QT Designer. So if we go to Program, well, rather me, I have this under Programming, but uh, the QT Designer or QT Designer allows us to design forms to be used within our Python programs. Now, remember, folks, that you don't have to use uh, the QT Designer in, in order to develop your GUI applications. You can do this all from code and put this all in code, but you'll see why this is a little bit easier here in a couple minutes. Uh, there's dialog with buttons. Di when you first open this, it's going to give you a couple templates that you want to use. We're simply going to use a dialog without buttons because we want to add all of our components and widgets by themselves. Okay, so simply just creates us a window here and take it step by step. First thing we want to do is uh, name the object name. So uh, <coughs> this is the name that we're going to instantiate in the class. Uh, so if it's your main window, you want to call it main window. If it's something other, settings dialog, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, main window here. Okay. And over here, these are just the uh, properties of that uh, object. So we can see all the uh, objects here, or rather properties for this object that we can run through. And uh, we'll get to icons because we're going to create a resource file, which is interesting because it's very, very nice to be able to have your icons in there. And that's something that we'll do here in a little bit. So we have all these uh, objects here. We have main window name. And uh, we want to see if we can name the window here. So let's move down here, window title. And we want to name this uh, shadow adder. version fu. Yeah, well, that's just fun for me, so. Now it's going to show up there. And uh, as we go to our form, we can go in our form thing and preview, and this is going to show us, you know, our window title, as it would appear if we ran it. So this is preview. So we'll close that now, and we have those uh, attributes set for that widget or object, and you can see what this type of class this is, is a queue dialog, and this will coincide with your programming code in Python. So, we're only going to have a couple things on here. We're going to have a button, and we're going to have uh, basically some text entry. Um, so, let's add our text entries, and over here in the widget box, you can uh, search text. Yeah, and it'll give you those uh, those widgets with that. So, we'll just use uh, the text edit. We're going to put two text edits down here. Actually, no, we don't want to do that. We want to use something that's not just big, but basically just a a simple line. So what should we use for here? When you do this so many times, this gets to be a uh, common. So let's say edit and see what we have. Line edit. So that's what we want. We want a line edit. Text edit is a little bit different because it's a larger box. So uh, we'll add two line edits here. And we'll put one at the top here, one right below it. And we'll search for button, push button. We want a push button. And of course we want a label. This is what we're going to put the uh, the sum of those two numbers. I'm going to try to resize this so it looks nice. And of course we'll put our button right here. Make this button just a little bit bigger. You know, larger. Because we're going to put an icon on here, so it'll look nice. And let's resize our form. And there we have it. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is name our widgets here, which is very important. So our object name here on our properties, uh, I'm just going to use a, a naming convention, which I've always used because I know what it is. So that's num1. And we'll call this text num2. And our label, we'll 
call this label sum and our button add. So it pretty much describes what those things are going to be doing in there. Uh, it helps me out when I'm programming and you can do it any way that you want. Use your own naming conventions but as you go through this you can see that. So next thing we're going to do is going to add. Uh, we're going to make this button say add. Okay. So now we have all our uh, widgets labeled here, except one thing, our, our label sum. We don't want anything to show in there. So the text in there, we want to just have that nothing, because we're going to update that as we go. Okay? So now we have our form. Now, there are signals and slots editors within this, and once you get to learn Python a little bit, you can, uh, uh, you can start to use these. But for the purposes of this, we're not going to be using the signals in here. I mean, we can add them, but just to give you an idea of what they do. Uh, a sender, this is just going to, a sender is going to be the sender, which, uh, which widget is going to be sending the signal. You know, basically a signal is an action. So we could say the button add signal, we're going to be adding this and we'll show this to you. And the signal uh, basically would be clicked. So the button add, when it's clicked, the label sum will receive the Python code, which is A. So you, we're not going to be using a slot here, uh, but basically you'll see the button add clicked receives the label sum, and uh, the sum is going to be updated. So we would basically be updating this. okay? Uh, but we're going to be writing our own definition, our own uh, method, rather, or function for this. But just to illustrate what you could do with that if you wanted. So this is pretty much all we're going to do with the form. But we're going to leave it open for a second here because we want to do something that, uh, that a lot of people forget and are not very clear on, and that's adding an icon resource uh, to the program. We want to create our own resource file so we can put a little icon on our shadow icon on our add button. And uh, we're going to do this here with our resource file. Now, I've already created this resource file so I don't have to type it. Okay, so I'm going to save this as, as, uh, as we go to our PyCharm project and Shadow Adder, I'm going to save this as QRC. So this is a QRC file, so make sure that if you're doing this on Windows, uh, that you, if you're doing this in Notepad, you have uh, all files selected, so you don't have a text file because you want to have this extension to be QRC. Linux users, you don't have to worry about that. It says all files down here. So icons.qrc. Okay, so let's save that. So we have our icons file. .qrc. So when we open our PyCharm projects, we have our icons QRC file, and what we need to do with that icons QRC file is uh, convert that to uh, Python code in a way that the Python uh, the uh, interpreter can read it. Okay, so you'll notice inside this icon file that we have a file icons button dash icon dot png. So you have to create an icons folder in here uh, to do that. And I have already one of my tutorials, so I'm going to copy this and just move it right over to save time. And inside that, you see your button icon dot png file. Okay, so. We have our QRC file set. So now th what we want to do is we want to select that in in our uh, QT Designer application dialog here. So as we scroll down here, we see the icon. Okay, and when you see the icon, it says choose resource file, choose file, or set icon from theme. Uh, I cannot guarantee choose file will work on every system, but what I do know works on every system is the choose resource. So you choose your resource, and uh, you're going to add this resource here, prefix. You add another one. Okay, and it's going to ask you to select that uh, resource file. So we're going to select our icons.qrc file and open it. And as you can see, we now have our prefix in icons.qrc. So we have that, and we, then we move over and click, and we can uh, select that button there. So, and look, it's a little too small for me, so I'm going to make it uh, a little bit larger. I'm say 48 by 48. Yeah, it looks kind of neat, right? So now we have, let's, let's take a look at it and preview it, form preview. Yeah, pretty neat. So we got a little shadow icon there right next to our button. Add. You know what? Let's probably just take that 
add off there. So let's click on there and just use the shadow button. I think that looks pretty cool. So we don't want any text in there. So let's do that. Maybe make it uh, 50. Maybe a little larger. 50 by 50. So we move there. Or 64 by 64. There we go. Yeah, we can make it a little bit larger. So there we go. Let's preview this. I probably should have cropped that image a little bit better so it fits right within there. And then we have a little bit of space over here. But I think it looks okay for now. We're just in a matter of uh, getting through this. So now we have our icon, we have our resources files, and uh, and we have to save this now. So we're going to file save as. And uh, this is a UI file, so we're going to go to our Python uh, shadow adder here. And we're going to name this. Uh, the naming conventions of this are going to be whatever you want it to be. So try to keep it similar to what you're using. So we don't want it to be untitled, of course, but this is our main window. So we probably want to call this... Uh, window form let's say main main window form okay so we have that saved in here and let's go back over to our main window form here so this is our directory where we hold rather where in which all of our uh, files are held so we have our icons, our icon QRC, and our main shadow. There's things that we have to do before we can go back to our PyCharm programming IDE. Um, the first thing that we're going to have to do is convert our form to a Python file. And we would do that with a command line project, or a command line from PyTools, or PySide Tools, uh, which is called uh, PySide. Let's list our files so we get the right one. So we're going to say PySide UIC. And this is, like I said, in the Python tools, PySide UIC. And then our form, which is going to be our main main window form. So this takes that argument as the main window form. Minus O, we're going to output it to what? So we want to output the main window form. Let's just leave it the same thing. Main window form dot PY. So PySide UIC is what we're going to be using if you're using PySide. If you're using uh, PyQt, uh, you're going to use PyUIC4 rather than PySide-UIC. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're using PySide. I like PySide better than anything. So we're going to be using that, and we're going to go ahead and convert that. So, bang, that's done. So now we have our main window form, .py. Okay, that was converted from this file to this file, so Python can read it. But we're not done, because we want to also... Uh, we have to convert our resource file so it can be read by Python. So we're going to use, of course, uh, PySide-RCC and our icons resource file, which is called icons.qrc, and we're going to output this as... Now remember, this is the important part, icons. Then you have to put an underscore rc.py. For some reason, Python wants to do that on icons. On it. So whatever name of your Python icons file is, if it's iconsqrc, if it's resources.qrc, you're going to say resources underscore dot rc.py. So let's output that and check now that we have our icons file there. Okay, which we do. Okay. So now we can move along to our Python program here. Okay. Now, the first thing I like to do when I start this is I like to open my uh, main window form that we just converted so I can see everything that we have there. Now, you'll notice at the bottom that we have our uh, import icons RC. This is what uh, we just converted. So this puts it in there automatically when you create your form with uh, uh, Qt Designer. So we have our main file, which is here, and we have our icons py. And just to show you what that looks like, how it's converted, <laughs> um, you can see this just converts this to hexadecimal representations. So, yeah, no, big file. So, 
we had we created our template. This is what we pasted before, and now we're going to have to change those few things that I told you before. We want to edit. So your file, a form file. So our, what's our form file? Main window form.py. And we just say main window form. So it imports our main window form there. Okay. Now, when we look at this, this is what's important, is the main window here. Uh, this is the class that we're going to be instantiating here. So we have, we want to edit this and update this. So we want to say main window form. And the class inside the file, which is main window, as we see here, main window. So UI underscore and then main window. Now, technically, everything should run right now, but uh, programmers make problems all the time, and as we see, I just caught that there. Uh, let's see if it'll run. Um, now, it's rare that I run a program and it just shows, okay, wonderful. <laughs> Didn't make any mistakes. It's rare that I run a program and I won't have at least one or two errors with a, with a typo or anything, but there you can see, you know, we're running our Python program. We've incorporated everything that we need to do. And if we type numbers in here and hit add, we notice nothing's, nothing's going to happen. Uh, the reason why that is is because we have to add, uh, uh, we have to add our uh, connections to it. We have to add our uh, listening connections and signal connections. Okay? So... The next thing we're going to do is write another definition here, and this is going to be a, this is going to be, well, first we don't want to write our definition. First, let's write our uh, signal here. So we're going to say self.connect self dot dot button add And the signal that we want is going to be clicked. Okay, so you'll notice before that uh, when we talked about signals and slots, uh, this is basically when the button's clicked, we're connecting this to ourself. So this is going to be the sender. So the button's going to be the sender here, and the button sends what? A clicked to what? Okay, and this is going to be our definition. And we haven't written this yet, so this is going to be an unreferenced variable. So we're going to say self dot uh, add me. And add me is going to be this definition here that we're going to write next. Okay? So let's say def. add me and inside there we're going to say self okay so now this is going to be the code that handles this uh, connection and this signal so we're connecting this thing to itself we're saying self button add I'm just going to check to make sure that that's a button add which it is so btn this is our widget in there a button add so num1. So uh, I like to do this this way. You could do this anyway, but I'm going to call this num1. And what does num1 equal? So that's num1 equals what? So we're going to say self dot text num1 and the text inside that field which would be text. Okay? So now we're, we're setting this variable number num1 equal to what is inside text num1 here? You see, this is basically acts as object variable, so we're simply pulling the text from that uh, editable text field. And we're going to do the same thing with num2 equals self uh, dot text, and PyCharm is just beautiful when it completes these text thing. Uh, for us, and then we're going to say text. Now, I deliberately let something out here because I'm going to show you what programmers run into uh, that helps a little bit. Uh, but I deliberately let something out here. But we'll move on to show you what the uh, kind of problem is with this program that we have to fix. And we'll say 
we'll say the total. Actually, let's just make the sum because we're adding. Okay, the sum is going to be num1 plus num2. Okay, so we have that num1 plus num2 is the sum. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we have to set that label to that sum value. Okay, so we want to say self dot label. That's our label sum in our form. Remember, it's right over here. So label sum right here. That's how we create it. So we want to say self dot label sum dot which method we want to use set text. Okay. And in here, this is going to coincide uh, with how we want to do it. So I'm going to deliberately make a mistake here and put on uh, percent sign percent %s. And for programmers, we already know what this means. But that means string formatting. And this is just Python for our sum. Okay? So that's our sum there. And uh, we have this all set up now, so... Maybe this is our program. So we should be able to run this right now. Let's cross your fingers and see what happens. We don't have any problems, which usually we do almost every time. Um, self is not defined, so we're going to go through and we're going to have to debug this. Okay. So we see it the first thing we have at line 9, and you, you're going to find this a lot class, main dialog, main window form, UI main window. Well, let's see what happens if I just make that main window. Might have uh, just construed that. Yeah, that happens all the time. So, main window form and main window. Okay, so let's take a break and we're going to come back and uh, we're going to show you the debugging sequence of uh, what happened next. Stay tuned. Welcome back Shadow Coders. I hope you got your coffee, I hope you took your bathroom breaks, and uh, I hope you have enough caffeine to last you here for the next couple minutes uh, in this uh, cool little Python tutorial. Now, let's jump right in. Now, you remember what happened last time for the break. We tried to run the program here, and we got these errors. They can be a bit... Uh, they can be a bit dodgy at times because the first error we see is on line 9. And if we go up to line 9 and we look at this, uh, this is our main class here, and... Uh, you know, before it gave me a little bit, it threw me for a loop because uh, I know that these are correct. Uh, so I know that my main window form uh, dot UI underscore main window, I know that's correct because uh, I can take a look at the main window form that we designed in uh, Qt, Qt Designer. And uh, I know that that is the proper class. So and that can be a bit it can be a bit odd when you're looking at that. But more important, let's go look down at the next uh, line here and and we can see this is the thing that uh, really gives us an idea of what the problem is to debug the program. It says name error, uh, self is not defined. Now, if you remember, we discussed how important it is for indentations uh, to indent properly with Python. You'll notice that all of the selfs, you know, self dot whatever, in this Python code is purple. Okay, and that's the great thing about PyCharm here is uh, that it uh, highlights all the specific things that are needed, you know, for code readability. But you'll notice if we move down, we were, when we wrote our uh, our connection, our signal, and our senders, uh, that the self isn't purple. So if we mouse over it, it says unresolved reference. So what would make you think? I mean, down here I have a self, and it's not an unresolved reference. So we have to think and put our mind to it. Well, what's going on here? And of course, what you see right away is that this is in line with the this is in line with this first def here, which is this def uh, function. Okay, so this is outside the realm of that definition. So if we simply tab in and put that in line with the indentations for this first def, we notice now that uh, it turns self turns uh, purple, and uh, we can see. And if we run this program we can see now that we don't have those errors anymore. Okay? So, we ran the program. It's working good. We have our button. 
Now, let's type in some numbers and see what happens. Now, this is what I deliberately let out before to show you some things that we need to do with our code. So, 6 and 9, and we do that, and, well, we don't get the addition of uh, 6 and 9. That should be 15. So, but it's, it's basically saying 69. Well, why is that doing that? Well, when we look down here at the definition that we've added, this function, add me, the add me function that we wrote, uh, we're taking the text from the txt num1 widget uh, and pulling the text from it. So this isn't a number. We're, we're, this, this actually is returning a, a, a string value instead of a, a number value. So for C++ and C programmers, uh, we pretty much know what we have to do here. It's almost like casting in different languages, but uh, to solve this issue, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're basically going to tell this we want this to be an integer, which is a whole number in programming. So we just cast that real quick there. Now, there's probably the wrong terminology to say cast, but um, we've done that. And uh, you can also specify down here, I mean, percent string, uh, the label set text percent string. So, uh, you know, and then don't forget about this uh, uh, percentage sign here, usually called a modulus, but we don't use it as a modulus in Python here. Uh, it's just printing out the sum in the label. So, self.lbl sum.set text of type string and what value, which would be sum. And sum is num1 plus num2 from num1 and num2 text fields that we entered. So when we run this program now, we should see that we have the exact thing that we, uh, thing that we want. So 8 and 4 equals 12, which is good. So we know that our program works now. We know that we've done everything uh, the correct way. But just for purposes of showing you something, let's try to put in a 2.2 .2 here and see what happens. And you'll notice that we're going to get an error because down here it says value error invalid literal for int, which means that 2.2 .2 is not an integer. 2.2 .2 is uh, basically a floating point. Floating point numbers for those who program uh, are simply numbers with decimal points. It's very, very simple to do that. So if we change this back to a whole number, you know, we don't get that error anymore. Okay. So that's a, a basic Python program using Qt Designer, Qt Designer, and uh, PyCharm, which I have the professional edition 4.5.1, and uh, um, PySide. So another thing that I did want to show you, though, is uh, this is uh, something that you can do from the Python or from command line into Python. It's just to show you uh, how to find out your PySide version. So you basically want to look and uh, see, and I have everything written down, and I, 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 there's too much to know all the time. So you always want to keep notes on everything that you do, and you'll notice that I do that at all times. So let's, uh, let's do this and show you how, show you how to use your, see your PySide version. So let's go Python. So we're going to use the Python interpreter here on the terminal. So we get Python. Let's type in, I already have this typed out, but import PySide. Okay, and then we want to import PySide.qt core. Okay, then we will print out PySide version. So this is Python 3. So if we print out the parentheses, we see 1.2.1 right here. Okay, and then the PySide QT core version, we could print out as 4.8.6. So we simply just show you uh, how to run some simple Python code right from the command line there. And if you want to test and run uh, Python code uh, just from the command line to show some adding numbers and things like that, just to see before you get into your uh, bigger programs, then that's something that you can do also. So this concludes this tutorial. And uh, I am going to put this code onto my Google Drive. Everybody, if you want to download the source code, I'll put it in a, a tar file or a tar, -Z, tar GZ file. And you can get the source code for yourself, okay? I ask that you don't change the author or anything like that. Or if you're going to use portions of this code, please reference uh, Shadow's Government when you do it. But that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. And uh, I appreciate you watching. And please request more tutorials if you'd like to see something else in Python. And uh, PyCute or Cute Designer, let me know. Uh, this is Shadow saying uh, enjoy it and uh, keep coding. Adios.